actually going to turn up the boost by replacing the pulley that's on there right now with a smaller 3.25 inch pulley. The pulley that I'm running right now is 3.65 inches. I'm going to switch it out for this 3.25 inch ZZ Performance modular pulley system, which is really, really trick because then I can switch pulleys later without having to press on and press off or press off and press on the pulley that's on the snout. What I'm gonna have to do is press off that pulley and press on the modular adapter. And then I will install the pulley itself onto the modular adapter. And I'm sure that some of you are wondering what the power difference is going to be or what are my power levels right now? I'm guessing that my power is somewhere around 315 wheel horsepower. Keep in mind, the GS400 is 235 wheel horsepower stock. That's almost 80 wheel horsepower better than stock in its current form. I'm hoping that this pulley, this 3.25 pulley, takes me into 330 wheel horsepower range. But in the end, you don't really know until you put it on the dyno. And my local dyno places are charging an arm and a leg, over $300 US to run on the rollers. This thing is gonna need an LSD and a clutch, much more than it already does with this pulley installed. And we'll go for a drive at the end and see what we think of this pulley. This is the 3.65 inch pulley on the SVT Cobra. It has to be pressed off of the snout. I'm gonna take a mighty vac and get all of the fluid out of this snout. And then I'm gonna separate the snout from the main body. I don't even have to really disconnect anything. And then when the snout comes off, I can take it down to my 20 ton press and press it off of there and press the modular adapter on. Now, if you guys didn't already know, or you haven't watched my previous episodes, you know that I have the fuel system set up to run more boosts. I even have the intercooler right there. I have 330 injectors. I have a Walbro 255 pump. I have got the split second enricher. I've got the Apex Neo, which is actually leaned out quite a bit. So I have a lot of room to go. Right now, I wanna show you what my fuel maps look like so that we can make an adjustment to this before we actually put on the pulley because I don't want to jump in the car and take off and have it run lean. You basically can view that as a percentage. So I'm pulling that much of a percentage of fuel away from the system in order to maintain roughly 11.5 AFR. So I'll make a change off camera, but I just want you to know that you'll probably want to take your tuning system and do the same thing. This will just give me a little bit more room here. You're going to take a 14 millimeter, you're going to put it on the tensioner, and you're going to go lefty loosey with it, and that'll remove the tension. So once you do that, you can go ahead and slip the belt off. And in this case, we'll leave it near the engine because we can't take it off because of the upper radiator hose. And release the tension to make sure it's not caught on anything. Just smack it with a hammer, it'll bust it loose, and then that'll just come right off of there. Because some fluid is definitely going to drip. Once you pry off the snout, even if you drain it, it still is gonna leak. This is your fill plug right here. A T30 fits this, so just make sure you have a T30. One thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get a, a much smaller hose onto the larger one. So they, they have these adapters with the Mighty Vac, and that'll allow you to curve it and get all the way down into the bottom of the snout. So you gotta push in and feed it, and then you'll really start seeing the fluid come through. Not want to damage the mating surfaces so that's all i'm doing is just going down and just wiggling and just being real gentle with it and this thing should pull off like that Pulley. And you can actually feel this quite well as you go down and you want it to bottom out but you don't want to keep going and put too much stress on the shaft so you got to keep taking it off of there and taking a look you'll feel it bottom out so let's take a look and see you can see I got a little ways to go so just keep keep watching 
Okay, bottomed out. Let's see how close we are. Okay, this is loose fit. I know it's gonna be hard on this camera to see, but it looks, from an eyeball standpoint, it looks pretty well aligned with the AC compressor. And that's kind of what I'm going off of because you've got your idler right here, which it can move back and forth a little bit on the idler. This alignment here is pretty good, I think. Take this snout back off because it has to be sealed. Next, you're gonna to wanna to get these mating surfaces extremely clean. I recommend acetone or similar. Also, make sure you clean out any debris or any shavings that might've got in there from this whole process. of giving it about 24 hours to cure the FIPG. If you don't have that luxury, be sure to read the instructions on the FIPG that you decide to utilize. Next up, we'll be putting the belt on and then torquing these down. All right, I'm waiting for the FIPG to cure, so I'm gonna put a little note on here to avoid filling it with oil. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and put the belt on and that will allow me to go ahead and torque these five fasteners down here on the new pulley. All right, releasing the tension. I'm gonna center it on this. Double check your alignment. Your various pulleys under here. And release your tension. I'm just gonna put a dab of Threadlocker 42 on here and then run them in by hand. Don't forget your little fresh air system. Time to check your tensioner and make sure it's within the range. If you don't know what that is, I have another episode on that about replacing the tensioner and I'll show you in that episode how to see if it's out of spec or intolerance. But that is something worth checking, especially if you're supercharged. Now it's time to fill up the snout of the supercharger. It's gonna require roughly 7.3 ounces of supercharger oil. Some guys use 10W30 motor oil, but I recommend just using what's required or intended. The part number is listed right there, 10-4041. This is a syringe from Tractor Supply. It's only about $2. And then I have a piece of old vacuum hose that I'll use to attach to there. And that is how I will extract the new fluid or the fluid that I actually took out of the snout before because it only has a few thousand miles on it. And then I will use it to press it back in to right here. where you want to watch probably for the next 30 minutes at least and make sure nothing leaks out underneath. If it does, it's not the end of the world. You're just going to have to reseal it. Also, make sure you wipe up all of the oil prior to this because there might be some residual oil under there and then you might freak out and say, oh no, it's leaking. Quick reminder to go ahead and add fuel, especially from 3000 RPM on up. Go three to 5%, watch your AFRs and tune it from there. It's always better safe than sorry. So definitely tune on the side of caution.
feel stronger, especially above 3,000 RPM. You can really feel it kick in a lot sooner now, which makes sense because the RPM of the rotors are spinning a lot faster. So everything's good. I am enjoying it. Uh, second gear is ridiculous, which is my favorite gear. So it's, it's a lot of fun. I didn't have to pull or add as much fuel as I expected to keep me what I want to hit on my AFRs on this particular car is 11.6 and the reason is because I'm targeting 11.5 and I have my measurement device after the cat so AEM told me that it will actually be displaying a little bit rich so if you're targeting 11.5 you would want to shoot for 11.6 and that's what I'm shooting for and boy the car really pulls nice guys um, the pulley made a, a big difference, but nothing crazy. It wasn't like, oh, wow, the sound. But it does come on boost a lot harder, a lot earlier. So driving around town, I feel like it's it's a great mod. So highly recommended. I love the modular aspect of it. Let's keep cruising. My boost is definitely up. It's probably around eight. Watch on the gauge here. gear and here we go yeah lost traction there okay, let's lug it a little bit here sorry for all the wind noise I just like my windows now and it's hot let's watch the AFRs okay to be a little bit lean in the lower rpms there partial throttle input should get the rotor spinning a little bit sooner which should give you a little more power earlier on so i'm just gonna go about 133 percent here yeah it feels pretty good in my previous video point of view driving i was running the old Oh, there's a turtle pulley, the 3.65. So now I'm running the 3.25 pulley. If you're not already a subscriber, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, drop a comment, let me know what you think, and we'll see you on the next episode.